So we need to build an aviary and we need an aviary hatchery. We also need an expedition center. So I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to get ourselves the expedition center so that we can go ahead and get dinosaurs since that's kind of the whole point of the game. Now, what I think I'll do with this thing is go ahead and throw it sort of back here and we'll sort of try and bring the... I guess the path sort of down through there. I keep saying sort of. It's really annoying me that I keep saying sort of. I'm not sure why that's become like a new thing, but I'm going to try and not say it again for uh, sort of the rest of this video. So let's go ahead and just put this thing here because I can. It's a bit of a weird position for it, but it will do the job. I'm going to bring this path up to about here. We'll bring it over to about here and we'll bring this guy out and straight down. And I guess we can get rid of uh, that right there. And that keeps us pretty good in terms of getting a expedition center. And that should now be that particular mission objective done. Well, as soon as they bring down all the scaffolding. Which, I always love how the building works in this game. I think it looks really cool. But there we go. We have an expedition center. So, now we need the aviary. And we need to research this. So, let's go and have a look at the science center. Let's view some research, let's view some structures, and we have the aviary right here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get these two to work on it, which is going to take 32 seconds. And in the meantime, I want to go to the science center, or sorry, not the science center, I want to go to the staff center, view the scientists, and I want to get DeVos to go and rest for a little bit so that we don't have, uh, you know, scientists getting overworked a little bit. And while that's going on, we'll speed the game up just a bit and see if we can get the aviaries that little bit quicker. And there we go. We've got them. So these guys are, they're kind of huge. They're, they're kind of huge. I'm kind of excited about this. I've, I've got to be honest. I'm, I'm actually really excited about this. I think it's going to be so cool to have these things here. So let's... Let's try and get it roughly in line with this path. So let's bring this thing up a bit to there. And let's go for, let's see if I can get this in line. I think that's roughly going to be in line right about there. So let's build that for $100,000. And then I kind of want to make it bigger. We have a good bit of money here. So let's have some fun with this. Let's build it sort of out this way and like this it's huge it's gonna be absolutely huge but i think that looks really cool so i i do want to get this and there's all of it getting built that looks so good that looks so good and uh, i guess now what we do is we're gonna want these hatcheries so let's put one on that side let me pause for a second as well while i'm doing this and let's put one on that side because if i've lined this all up properly I should be able to bring that down to there, and I should be able to bring you out and down to about there. And I guess, what else have we got? We've got these guys. We have the aviary viewing galleries. So let's put one there, and let's put one there, and that'll give us a great view of the aviary. And then I should be able to very, very easily go down like that, and from this side, we should be able to do the same thing. And this is, it's just going to look good. I think it's, I think it's going to look pretty good. Uh, so that's going to snap down to about there. And can I get these to connect up on the other side? Uh, sort of. Let's extend you a little bit. Just so this works exactly how I want it to like that. And uh, this guy is going to be exactly the same thing down to there. Going to about there. And that looks good. So we'll demolish this this bulk demolishing thing is not what I was what I was looking for. Uh, we'll demolish all of that, and that looks pretty good. I I like it a lot. We'll get rid of you as well, and there we go. Is that's that's a giant aviary? Although obviously, we kind of need some power. So I wonder. I I can't really get away with it up there. So let's do power. I guess here is fine. And I think we'll just do another one on the uh, the other side as well. So I guess about there is fine. 
So that should be perfect. That's a giant aviary. That's the hatcheries. That's some viewing platforms. I love this. I love that we can get flying dinosaurs. This is something I missed so much in the first game. Ready on this end. We could send out expeditions for remote capture. These creatures can cover a lot of ground from the air, so we should snap to it. All right, let's fly the not so friendly skies. Okay, we have an incident in Oakland. We've got whatever that is. Let's have a little look and see what we're dealing with. We've got pteranodons. Okay, let's send you and you deal with that. It's going to be 35 seconds until we get them. So let me pause while we're dealing with this. Flyers ready to deliver. Have them brought to the aviary hatchery by our transport team. We'll then release them into the domes. And by release, you mean contain? Yes, in a controlled environment and under our supervision and care. Excellent. We should be on schedule to deliver assets to the other site. Okay, we'll get ourselves a response facility so I can get some rangers set up for uh, the aviaries as well. We've got the expedition heading out there. So once this is built, we can get some rangers check in the two hatcheries and we should there we go we've got some pteranodons so there were five of them found there were five of them captured let's go ahead and transport and go one right there two three four five and i guess we also want to say that the ranger team is going to go to that hatchery and also that hatchery right there and that'll keep them, you know, keeping an eye on everything going on. Uh, and looking at it, we have our first delivery, which looks ridiculous. I'm just going to say it. It looks, it looks, what's this? What, 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 look at this. That's, that's so stupid looking. It's so dumb looking. I, I'm sorry. It's, it's really, really silly looking. Just this thing flapping around. Oh my God. That is not safe. <laughs> That's not, that is not safe. That is not at all safe. Looks like we might be getting things under control. I would say famous last words, but given the number of times that I could have used this very phrase over the years, I'm going to go with the uh, quote predictable unquote last words instead. Dr. Malcolm, why are you contacting us? Same thing as always, the dinosaurs and my obsessive need to witness the car crash when it happens. It's good to hear from you again, Dr. Malcolm. <laughs> ah, Dr. Dua, you're now increasing the uh, so-called intelligence part of the CIA, if I'm to uh, understand correctly. We do what we can. Yes, yes, we do what we can, and sometimes more than we should. Interesting times. And I mean times as the dinosaurs are living in ours. Should they be here? No. Are they? Yes. Ergo, they should. And the hidden hand of chaos is revealed. It's what else remains hidden that's concerning me at the moment, Doctor. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, yes. And that's why I've brought somebody with me to help shed some light in this regard, Mr. Isaac Clement. Yeah, a specialist of, uh, of the spectacular. Uh, you should be hearing from him soon. These dinosaurs require feeders if they're to stay healthy. Stay on top of it. I've already got on top of it. They've got a feeder right there. He's feeding. He's eating. Hey, oh, it's him. I'm Isaac Clement. Dr. Malcolm should have mentioned me earlier. We have some specific requirements, including a ranger team to gather information and monitor the animals within the aviary. A viewing gallery is also on our list. So, now it's on yours. <laughs> okay. So, the pteranodons need 90%. I, want to, I just want to talk. I've been thinking. I just want to talk think without getting nervous. interrupted. No, no, seriously. Why the flyers? Uh, okay, I'm not following you. Dr. Malcolm starts contacting Dr. Dua from who knows where when these flying reptiles become an issue. Why? Because they introduce a unique danger and he's concerned. 
Yeah, that's that's probably it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Owen. For now, we should make sure the satisfaction levels for the flyers is high. That's verifiable data we can use. Forget the conspiracy angle. Hello? We're chasing prehistoric animals, Claire. Reality ain't what it used to be. I mean, he's got a point. He he does he does kind of have a point. You know, we're 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 chasing down dinosaurs here. It's 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 a little weird to uh to put it mildly. It's definitely definitely a bit weird. But sure. We'll we'll not worry about conspiracies and things like that for the time being. I do want these trees here though cuz I think trees surrounding the aviary is going to look really cool. So I'm just going to sort of try and surround the immediate area around the facility with just a whole bunch of trees like that. And I think it looks pretty good. I do. Now, what do these guys need for their comfort? They need a bit more water and they need some rock. So let's see what we can do about that. Let me get a small radius for this thing and we'll just sort of pull down this way for a bit more water inside of the aviary. And that should be enough and it absolutely is. We'll give them like a little bit more since they have a lot of space in here. So something a bit like that and then rock. So let's just sort of try and just go around the edges of the water to see if we can kind of do the rock this way uh, so that we don't have to go too crazy with it. And that actually looks to be enough right there. So that should keep them fairly happy. I don't know if that's going to max out their comfort or not, but uh, I would imagine that's pretty good. So let's see what we can do about vegetation then, because I do want to get a little bit of, you know, shrubbery in here just to uh to detail the place and make it look a little bit more interesting so we'll do sort of some around there we can do a little bit of uh this guy just sort of up that way do maybe a little bit of that guy in there as well and that looks all right i kind of like the idea of some small uh trees or something i guess so we can kind of you know do some of these guys uh do some of these guys you know maybe throw some uh some forest kind of in there a little bit as well just so they get some trees they could potentially land on i don't think they will land on trees but i think it'd be kind of cool if they're just able to you know have a bit of a, a, a bit of variety in their uh, in their enclosure right so that looks pretty good that should keep them happy uh we'll speed things up and see what their comfort goes up to which is 100 percent okay so that should keep the pteranodons nice and happy what are you doing this one's just, they they appear to just be hovering, which is a bit weird. I'll be honest, I'm not, he seems a bit tired. He seems to be having some, <laughs> some issues, but they are uh, largely quite comfortable. And I think sleeping right now, which is slightly terrifying to be completely honest. But that seems like a good, good aviary right there. So let's see what we have to do now. We need to increase the facility rating. Oh boy. Yeah, you were right, Dr. Malcolm. Uh, it's, it's sort of my thing. The facility is functioning as anticipated. We have enough assets in the pipeline that we should be able to move forward soon. Right now we're putting out brush fires, but this, this is an inferno that could engulf the world. Your concern is noted. For now, I suggest we focus on this location. It's about high welfare and visibility for the animals. And safety for the DFW staff, of course. Learning to coexist with the dinosaurs is a process. We're getting there. <sighs> and if we don't, where does that leave us? We will have created an apocalypse born of our arrogance. Humanity versus the dinosaurs. And honestly, I'm not sure who deserves to win. All right, so aviary facility needs to get up to 1800 in asset ratings. If oh my god. To find success, we must look to the sky. That means more flyers and more species of flyers in the aviaries. Flap, not flop. Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay. So obviously I know that playing the campaign is going to get me a bunch of dialogue, but I, you, you, they could just give me the little just give me the little box and it's fine. Uh, now, let's see what we're dealing with out here. We have Dimorphodons. I don't know anything about Dimorphodons. It'd be kind of cool if I could find something out about them beforehand, though. Because I don't know if... Like, we could get more Pteranodons, right? 
we could go and get tropiognathus. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I feel like I've just had a medical emergency. Um, let's get the Dimorphodons. Let's, let's give that a shot and see what's up. So we'll send you out. We'll send you out. It's going to take two minutes. That's fine. We can, in the meantime, go ahead and get some rest for you. And that should be all right. I don't know if the Dimorphodons are going to be enough to make the facility more interesting. I don't know if they can even share the same aviary as uh, whatever we have right now, but we'll certainly find out. Let's also fill up the uh, the fuel right there to make sure that we stay, uh, you know, powered up. And I'm also kind of wondering if we have any dinosaurs out this way. It doesn't look like we do. I think this is a relatively small map because this one's kind of designed to just handle, you know, th this is the map that teaches you how an aviary works. And I feel like thus far, this entire campaign has been one big tutorial. So we found six Dimorphodon. We captured six Dimorphodon. Uh, they are also going to eat fish. So we'll transport them in here. And hope sincerely that uh, this works out. And uh, there they go, getting, getting lowered in there. Oh, these are the ones with the tails. Ooh, show me this. Oh, look at him. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's beautiful. I need to... Okay, okay. I was going to get a picture of um, of the other ones for the uh, the video thumbnail, but look at him. That's like a... It's That's so cool looking. I was going to say it's like a dinosaur. It's like a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Um, oh, he's so cool looking. Oh, he's looking... Oh, look at him. He's, he's very smug. He's very smug. He knows he's on camera, doesn't he? All right. I don't know how this is necessarily going to look for a video thumbnail but that right there that's our shot that's that's perfect i i i have already taken one i was gonna use uh but this is this is perfect let me just get uh grab that screenshot right there <laughs> sorry i try not to do that in the video but they're really cool looking dinosaurs and uh i'm pretty sure we're gonna have to send out the ranger team again to make sure that they're okay which hopefully they are. So let's have a little look. He's lonely. Oh, no. So he needs sand and he needs more fish. Okay. Let's uh, let's do something about that. So in terms of fish, that's, that's quite an easy one. Because what we can do is just throw another uh, feeder right about there. And that'll keep them happy. In terms of sand, though. I mean, we can sort of try and be a little bit cheeky with it. But it looks like they're going to want a lot of sand. So let's do a bunch of sand kind of around the water. Just something like that. And that's now going to be enough. But then the the other ones, the pteranodons. Now you're starving because you can't move. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, but you are going to want more rock now. So we'll go in. We'll grab some rock. And I guess we'll just sort of dot some rocks kind of around this. Right? So that should be fine. Uh, we can sort of dot some rocks Kind of here as well and that should keep them happy we can maybe do some rocks kind of here and some rocks about there and that should keep them all right uh this guy is starving though because he can't move and i i guess i guess what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go over here we're gonna have to get the capture team and i need them to go ahead and tranquilize these two uh whatever they are pteranodons uh so if they wouldn't mind going ahead and doing that not 100 percent sure how it's going to work with the uh with the helicopter oh it just flies over and i guess oh the drone does it interesting right that was that's unexpected uh but that's okay that's that's totally fine at the very least they're not going to be stuck anymore which is kind of what's important uh so I don't know if he got away. I don't think he did. All right. Let's see. Let me transport you to... Okay, same aviary is fine. I need... We might need medical. We we might need medical. So this guy is low health, presumably because he was starving. He's going to be tranquilized for another while as well. Okay. 
So this isn't necessarily part of what I think is supposed to happen in this scenario. I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to have starving Pteranodons. But I think because they got stuck for whatever reason, yeah, they've uh, they've wound up starving. So let's let's get our hands on a medical facility. And I guess what we do is we can sort of just, I suppose, slap it down right about there. And uh, we'll get an MVU out to uh, look and see what's up. So get rid of that bit of path and see if we can maybe, maybe do something about this. So what do we got here? Heal and scan. So let's go ahead and try and do that. Let's see if we can help these dinosaurs out a little bit. And then hopefully that's going to make them, you know, nice and comfortable. So what exactly do we do? Is it a drone that heads out? It is a drone. Okay. So he's been healed, which is good. And you are low health. It looks like they have to, oh, they do have to switch side. That's, that's a bit weird. Can I, can I do this manually? Is, is that something I can do manually? Cause it'd be really cool if I, if I could. You know, control the drone and all that. That would be... That would be something. It doesn't look like it, though. Which is slightly... Slightly upsetting. Would have been, would have been really cool if I could. Uh, but I think they're still going to, uh, to heal them up. So we'll get the drone in there. We'll look after them. That'll keep them nice and comfortable. Let's also resupply you. And that'll keep us going. And where's the drone? There's the drone. Okay. So they're still going to be out cold for a little bit. I don't know that we need to get more dinosaurs as much as we might just need to make sure those two are happy. But I suppose it wouldn't necessarily hurt. So let's view the map. And we've got Pteranodons and we have these, these, these guys. I guess let's get you two on that. And we'll go grab them. So it's going to be $100,000. We've sent them out. They can do their thing. We'll grab some more dinosaurs. Put them in the aviary. And just see what happens. And these guys are due to wake up in... Uh, two, two and a half minutes. And about three minutes for that guy. So that should be good. Can I control... I want to control the drone. I really want to control the drone. I think it would be so cool. I really think it would be so cool to control the drone. I also... This right here, just looking at them, kind of sitting there. Oh, I like that those guys point at them as well. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's kind of neat just seeing them sit there. I really like that. That's 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 kind of cool. Um, ooh. Okay, so four whatevers have been found. We captured three. That's all right. Let's transport, and let's go one, two, and three. And that'll hopefully push the asset rating up a little bit. And uh, as ridiculous as this, they look they look pretty they look pretty big. They might be the biggest flyers we have so far. I think they are. Okay. So we need to ensure that all captured flyers have 80% comfort, which they don't currently. So what do you guys want? Oh. Oh, they're not a fan of the cohabitation. Okay, but they're, I mean, they're still 94%, so that should be fine. I imagine it's probably this guy, right? So he's starving. He's at 96. There we go. So yeah, they're, they're happy enough, which is all right. And now he's over. He's getting his food. He can, uh, he can get some water as well. He can rest, which I think is, is what he's going to go do. He, someone's got low health. This guy's got low health. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I think he's all right. I think he's just, he's had a rough time of it. You know, he got stuck and he's, he's needing a little bit of help, but we'll go ahead and, you know, heal him up. We'll get him scanned. We'll check him out. He'll be fine. They all seem happy and that's, that's what's important. Although looking at it, where's the, where's the MVU? There it is. Let me add another task and say heal and scan that guy as well. Just, just to make sure. Oh, Okay. <laughs> All right, then.
All right, fair enough. That's mission accomplished. I'll take it. I will take it. That was kind of cool. I, I look forward to playing around with the aviaries, but I do feel like what's happening is we're... This entire campaign's a tutorial with the goal being to then throw you out into a sandbox mode, which I guess I'm okay with. Even contrived, planned, and managed beauty has its charms, but what appeals to the senses is the asymmetry of nature, its rough edges, its mistakes, a tree that is both out of place and exactly where it needs to be. Much like the dinosaurs. Excuse me, Dr. Malcolm. There are reports of a large herd of subject animals roaming freely in Yosemite. To my point, chaos. Don't you just love it? Yosemite. Over 1,000 square miles in size. It is home to one of the oldest plant species on Earth, the giant sequoias, which have been growing in this part of California for over 60 million years. That could be our connection. And what's drawing the dinosaurs here? The sequoias are familiar, part of their genetic memory. And this land could be a perfect fit for the dinosaurs. Okay. 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 Horse is already out of the barn. That's a saying, by the way. There's no horse in no barn. What Owen means is that things are already in motion. We have dinosaurs that we'll need to capture and facilities that need to be built. Uh, but not actual barns. Barns, no. Expedition center, a paleomedical facility, and a response facility, yes. <laughs> the host should give us a solid foundation. Okay, yeah, we can do that. That should be easy enough. We can get ourselves a medical facility, expeditions, and response facility. And I think, I think that's all I'm going to build because we don't actually have that much money. So if we got an arrival point, that's 25,000. Control center, 50. Science center, 250. We need the expedition center. We don't need a staff center. So we need three somewhat expensive facilities. So let's go ahead and do the expedition sensor there. Let me bring a path sort of, I don't know, down straight out of there, I guess. And then what else do we need? We need, so that was expeditions. We need the response sensor, which I guess could go right next door. So I think that's kind of what we'll do. We'll go for the, uh, the response sensor, I guess. I, I don't really know. I kind of, I, I guess we just sort of put it right next to it so there and then what was the other one the medical facility so it would go i guess right next to it sort of here ish so something like that that should be fine we'll get the paths all sort of connected to each other in some weird way uh like this i think this guy's connected as well which should be all right and we can demolish all of that in fact, we could probably just keep that entire section since it's probably going to be the connection to get, you know, out of there. Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's just bring a path all the way down here. These are all sort of doing their thing. They're apparently not connected to anything. I feel like we might need an arrival point. I'm starting to feel like that's actually going to be an essential thing. But at the very least, we'll throw this guy back here. And yeah, so no path to a rival point. So that's essential, but it's fine. It's only 25,000. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw an arrival point. I guess, I guess right here. Bit of a weird spot for it, but I guess that'll, that'll do. And then we'll just connect it up the way we've done to everything else. And we'll just, I suppose, demolish that bit. So let's get it built. Everything's working. We've got power. We've got $1.9 million. Not bad. Uh, in what aspect? I think my right side is a little better than my left. Owen, oh, I'm talking about the dinosaurs. 
We're going to want images of the species in Yosemite. Oh, and you're wrong about the right. Okay, I get it now. We can take one of the vehicles and go on a photo expedition. And, yeah, I know. My left is bad. You're still here? I'm leaving, but I haven't left. Get it? Do it. Play out. Oh. Gone, gone. I'm gone. So we need to get pictures of the dinosaurs, and there's a whole bunch of them here. I think these are Gallimimus. So that right there is, yep, a whole bunch of Gallimimus, $52,000. Not actually that much money for, uh, for that many dinosaurs, but I suppose they're relatively common. So let's just see what we got up here. I think that's a Baryonyx. Can I... Can I get him up and moving at all? Not really 100% sure that I can. He's kind of just chilling. Which I guess is fair enough. Baryonyx resting. 31,000 for the one dinosaur. I suppose we just head up and over and see what else we got. In fact, there is... There is something over there. Not 100% sure what it is. I can't really see it. What the hell is it? Amazing to see these animals in something so close to their natural habitat. These photographs are like we're not just capturing the dinosaurs, but a moment in time. Which, considering how they got here, feels doubly weird. I think this is as close as we'll ever get to seeing the dinosaurs the way they were 65 million years ago. And it's breathtaking. Now you're breathtaking, wait a minute. Probably the wrong game for that reference. Uh, let's see what we have down here. What are you guys all supposed to be? Got a little herd of... I'm not even going to try. Not even going to try. Got 75,000 for it, though, which is pretty great. Let's go for this and see if that counts as something. No dinosaurs in range, really. I strongly disagree. It's a pretty great-looking picture, but... Sure. What about this? Is that? Is, does that count? It does. And that was a good chunk of money. All right. What about here? What about you guys? We got a bunch of dinosaurs in the back there as well. Got some triceratops, which is great. We got a few more species to go. We got one parasaur right there, but I think there's a herd of them just up this way. So we'll go to the herd of, of parasaurs, since I think that's probably going to be better for money than just one on its own. And that is a beautiful picture. That is an absolutely beautiful picture, if I do say so myself. So that's... I'm, I'm happy about that. And then up this way, we've got one more species to take a picture of. So what have we got? We've got whatever this is. I've, I've really got no idea. It's a Nesutoceratops. Okay. Well, that was eight of them. We need our remote capture teams bringing back the most dangerous dinosaurs. The safety of the public and the dinosaurs are both at stake. I'm your man. And, uh, and I'm your man. I know. Once we have them, we'll get them secured within our new facility. And I know. So be careful. So here's my question. Increase asset rating by capturing dangerous carnivores with expeditions. There's a dangerous carnivore just out there. Is it implying that I need to put them in an enclosure? Or is it implying that I just need to capture them and bring them back here? Because if it's just capture them and bring them back here, that's... That's one thing. If it's capture, bring them back and sort of just cut them loose. That's that's a cheaper thing. That's, that's the angle I'm getting at here. I'm not... Not interested in how fancy it might be. I'm interested in, in how much this is going to cost. Although, to be fair, these fences are remarkably cheap. So I think we're probably okay. Uh, what we'll do is bring this guy up here. Bring this guy over. And we'll uh, demolish that. And I guess we want to get ourselves a gate. Which can go... I suppose right about there. It can't go there, but I think I think there's a pretty good spot for the gate. So we'll do that. And that should be fine for an enclosure. We've still got $1.9 million. So let's view the expedition map. 
and see what we're looking at. We're looking for dangerous carnivores. So we have Trudons. We have Metricanthosaurus, which are pretty big, actually. So let's get you two looking for the the three metric anthosaurus and we can't really go any further on expeditions we have one heading out so that should be fine now in terms of carnivores i would imagine that what we're going to want to do is get ourselves some water so we'll start with that we'll kind of just you know get a nice body of water over in the corner here and then i want to chop it down just a little bit like that because i might as well uh they're also probably going to want live prey so we'll go ahead and sort of drop that here. And we don't have rangers. Oh, we do have rangers. Sorry, we have a response facility. So let's throw a ranger post right in the middle of everything. And I guess we can... I, I've actually realized we can, I think, assign the helicopter to this ranger post. So the helicopter... Actually, I don't know if the helicopter is patrolling. I don't, I'm not, not a hundred percent sure it is. Let's, let's get the ranger team assigned to it as well. So that's, uh, we can see what's going on. But the helicopter's back, which is great. The rangers are heading in, which is fine. I imagine this enclosure is going to be a bit too small for the dinosaurs we're bringing in, but that's all right. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too stressed about that. I think, I think we'll manage and they should be here right now. So, three metric anthosaurus. We captured two. So, we'll transport them in. We have one and two. And let's see. They are actually not as big as I thought they were. Which is probably for the best. That is that is that is probably a good thing. So, let's go ahead and status check all of the dinosaurs. See what's going on with them. See what we can do for them. And hopefully make them comfortable. So missing forest. Okay. And open space. That's going to be a problem. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me go here. We'll sort of bring this over. And we'll go up this way. Up this way. And we'll just sort of expand their space as much as we possibly can. Well, not as much as we possibly can. But we'll expand the space a good bit which all of that should do. So we can now go ahead and start chopping out just some bits of fence here. And that'll give them more space to play with, which will hopefully keep them a little bit happier. So let's see. Missing forest. You still don't have the open space you want in your territory. Now you do. All right. So in terms of forest, let's just do this sort of thing. We'll kind of start down at this uh, this edge here. We'll do a little bit over there as well. And now they have everything they want. So now they should be happy. Increase asset rating by capturing dangerous carnivores with expeditions. So I I did. We have two metric anthosaurus and my asset rating is still exactly where it was. Why Why is my asset rating still exactly where it was? That's got me a little bit, a little bit concerned. I, 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 hmm. I'm not really sure what we need, what we need to do there. Uh, we'll get you two looking at this. And do I have to just cut them loose? Is that maybe what's up? I mean, they're, they're, they're dangerous carnivores. I'm kind of thinking we have to cut them loose because I'm also noticing there is no one on the ground there. Let's demolish this fence and see what happens. So dinosaur threat, obviously. It doesn't really seem to be doing anything for us either. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure it's working. Do I have to? Um, hmm. I wonder. I, I have a theory. I have, I have a bit of a theory about why this might be. Let me get a research viewing gallery. And that might, that might help. I don't know if we need this. That's kind of the problem, but I guess we'll get it. And then maybe it counts. I, I really have no idea. 
Uh, in terms of getting this path down here, that's going to be a fun little task. Uh, so bring, I guess, this guy sort of straight down. Can I bring it through there? I absolutely can. There we go. Oh, hello. So we got whatever these guys are. We got three of them. Give me two minutes to see if this works. I want to... So this, this fence is back up and running. This thing is up and running. Okay. It is important to ensure your dinosaurs are visible to guests from buildings with visibility. Check the dinosaur visibility view mode to identify any gaps in your coverage. Areas around popular buildings with visibility will likely become congested with guests. Ah. Right. So... Are we now making money from being able to see the dinosaurs? We are. Okay, so that's good. That's that's a success. I don't think throwing these dinosaurs into the same enclosure is going to be a good idea. So I think what we should do here is come off of this corner and go to, I want to say, about there. We'll go like this. And then we'll sort of build an enclosure... Uh, around whatever this is, the arrival point, I think is what that is. Uh, so down to there. I do want to just demolish that bit and that bit. And then essentially we'll come over here. We'll come over here. And I guess back a bit further. We'll come down. And that should be fine in terms of size. I, I think that'll be a pretty good size for whatever we're putting in there. So connect it at the corner. We'll demolish you. We can grab a section for a gate. Which can actually go, weirdly, right about there. Which I like. I think that's going to be a pretty good spot. So let's see. Let's bring a path up here. Not that we need to, but I want to. And let's put whatever the Herrera Sauruses are uh, into this space as well. So, a bit of water in uh, in the corner. Because we might as well do that. That'll be That'll be decent about there, I think. Uh, they're going to be carnivores, so we're going to need a carnivore feeder, which I guess can sort of go in that corner. And now we get to see what these guys are. We get to see what their deal is. We get to see if they're, well, whatever they are. We get three of them. So one, two, three. And then we're going to need a, a viewing thing as well. So this viewing platform or whatever it is can go right there. And connecting to that is going to be a total pain. Oh, boy. All right, so let's uh, let's let's bring this path down to here, and just the entire way uh, around all of this. So down to about there. We want to bring it over to about here, down this way, and uh, this guy's gonna come out and straight across. There we go. So that should keep us pretty good. They are now viewable but miserable. So. Let's see. We need to send an MVU. All right. Let me grab you. We'll add that task. And we'll get you guys looked at. And now, once we get them happy, which hopefully they will be at some point, uh, they, don't have, they don't have enough prey and they don't have enough forest. Oh, boy. All right. Well, let's see if we can maybe get them the forest that they're going to want. I think they're going to want a much larger space than I've actually given them here. Although it looks like they don't necessarily want as much open space as other dinosaurs tend to want. So we might be okay here. There we go. They seem quite happy with that. And in terms of, of prey, I guess we just throw another feeder in here. So we'll do that and that'll keep them happy. So they're thrilled. And uh, what exactly is going on? So what's, what's wrong with them? Minor fractures on all of them? How the hell did that happen? 